الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد so the uh, title of this lecture uh, is we might translate as the methodology or the manhaj the Arabic word I'm looking for of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah in acquisition derivation of uh, in acquisition of their creed of their creed derivation of its issues and refutation of the heretics. So, the, as I said, the, the title of this lecture, and inshallah the lecture after this, is the methodology or the menhaj of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah in the acquisition of their creed, in how they obtained the aqidah, creed over here in the aqidah, the derivation of its issues, the particulars of that creed, how they derive it, and how do they refute, uh, how, uh, how do they refute the heretic or the mubtidi'een, those who uh, oppose them in matters of belief? Uh, before I start with the lecture, I'd like to explain why did I choose such a topic. I think many people, especially those who are only familiar with English body of literature, would be surprised, you know, what would be the importance concerning that. And that is because I sort of sensed uh, some time ago that while, alhamdulillah, there are strides being made towards teaching people correct aqidah in the sense of teaching them particulars of faith, the whole methodology, the whole basis, the whole foundation upon which Ahlul Sunnah Jama'ah uh, based their faith is not really explained often. And the reason for this is basically twofold. First, that the lack of people who are uh, qualified in North America, not to say that I'm qualified, of course, in lecture, but that uh, the lack of qualified scholars who speak English to discuss this. And second of all, because usually this topic has, is uh, in the past, found scattered in the works of the scholars, and until recently, you did, don't find many works trying to elucidate this methodology in simple terms which can be easily taught in a session like this, until as of late. Uh, previously, the scholars throughout the centuries would discuss this either um, in different uh, parts of their book, they would maybe touch on the issue here or there, or they would discuss it in such uh, voluminous work, such large work that it's very difficult to try to digest and then uh, deliver as lectures and so forth. Allahu So I put down some points which I gathered from some of these uh, modern writings uh, discussing this, and these scholars or students of knowledge have sort of thoroughly and adequately gone through these classical works and have tried to present it for uh, people to understand. The principles which I'll be talking about, uh, further, uh, Jamal is published in a little essay, uh, perhaps I translated in an issue of uh, al Rashid about, I guess, two issues ago or something like that, concerning the fundamentals of Ahl Sunnah Jamal. So if there are some points that I sort of say quickly and it's difficult to write down, you can refer to that maybe. Please. Out of stock. Out of stock. Out of stock. Out of We can post a copy it. Uh, we have it on the PC at the hotel. We can maybe print some copies of those tools. Uh, but before I get into the topic, is the first issue, and basically I've divided this topic into about uh, three or four sections. The first section is we just, it's just a basic introduction. What does uh, certain terms mean? I mean, when we're discussing now, we're going to be using terms. I said the word creed, for instance now as an English term. Well, if you look up in what's your dictionary, you look at the word creed, it might mean something uh, not what we're looking for in this discussion. So we're talking about terms like aqidah and tawheed. Uh, what does Ahl sunnah wal jama'ah mean? What do we mean when we say the word as salaf al-salih? These are certain terms which have a religious uh, import to it, a religious significance. And we need to understand these terms in light of the Quran and Sunnah. The first part is a little introduction to some of these terms. The second part will be a discussion of some of the sources of uh, Ahlul Sunnah Jama'at Aqidah, which basically covers this first little aspect over here, the acquisition of their creed. 
In other words, they base their beliefs on certain sources, and their five in general, and I will discuss these sources uh, in brief. Uh, the third will be uh, section will be some unique characteristics that distinguish the aqid of Ahl al-Jama'ah from all other creeds, whether from the different sects which exist within this Muslim community, this Muslim ummah, and also from other religions outside of the Islamic religion. There are certain characteristics, unique characteristics, and I think I have six or seven, that um, separate the belief of the Sunni, Ahl al Jama'ah, Orthodox Muslims from all other creeds. And then we come into the third part, uh, which is the fourth part, the derivation of its issues. And these are the 12 principles that I have, or some principles, which how do we actually derive the different issues of belief. And there are about 10 or 12 principles. And then finally, uh, this one of the last principles is, which they derive is how they refuse, and this has 20 principles underneath it, and that's the refutation of the heretics. In other words, if those people who go against the Ahlus Jama'ah, how do they uh, uh, refuse them? So this is in general what these two lectures are going to cover, and I will try my best to cover this. Just to give you an example of how this topic is a very deep uh, topic, one of these uh, 12 principles, or 10 principles that I'll mention in their derivation of this issue, uh, one scholar of Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, wrote 10 volumes just concerning this. And this is an issue which you might have heard discussed uh, uh, from Brother uh, Jamal's uh, tapes on uh, al and the modernist, and that's the question of revelation and reason, and how do we uh, deal with this if we consider, if, there's, if we imagine or if we uh, feel that there's some sort of contradiction. I mean, Ibn Taymiyyah wrote uh, in 10 volumes recently was published, uh, an edited version of this manuscript of one of his works, and you might imagine that in just 10 volumes, you know, just for us to discuss this one issue this whole week, if we were just to discuss it, we really wouldn't be able to give the topic its due. So much less than to talk about all these principles of Latin and and try to sum it up in a couple of lectures is really not giving the topic its, its right. However, the idea is just to put the foundation, right, for further investigation and study with uh, qualified people, qualified leaders, inshallah, and that will allow us to you know, learn from them. We will be able to benefit, but at least now we just try to inform ourselves so when we come across these scholars, we can, you know, uh, benefit from them. Okay, so coming to the first point, and these are, you and I just said, since I see you brothers are adding that from the whole case, to write now, uh, introduction. And this is a definition. Uh, certain terms. The definition of certain terms. What are some, some certain specific terms? Uh, the first term we're going to take is aqidah, which you'll find me often calling the creek. This is just the way I translate it. Uh, not to say that so. Well, sound is the translation. Oh, I know. Okay, sorry. The other term is aqidah. Well, uh, linguistically, the word aqidah, uh, which I've chosen to translate as creed, as I said, has a number of meanings. I mean, in the sense of it's just linguistical uh, import. Any religious term in the Islamic uh, religion, any religious term, usually has a definition which is found in the language, which was used prior to the revelation, prior to the sending of the Prophet and then it has a specific religious meaning, you know, or a convention, religious convention, shari meaning, or uh which is based upon that linguistical meaning. The word aqidah uh, comes from the uh, Arabic maqdar, or verbal noun, uh, aqada, which means, uh, linguistically has a number of meanings. One of it is to, to knot, and to bind, and to tighten fastly, or fasten tightly, and to also has a sense of to fortify and to consolidate and to cement. These are all the linguistical basis of this word aqidah. However, by convention, when the scholars uh, use this term aqidah in, in religious writing, they mean a certain meaning, and that is any form, unwavering belief, which is not open to any doubt with its beholder. Irrespective of that belief is true or false, any belief that a person has in his heart that's firmly established in that person's heart and it's unwavering, in the sense the person has no doubt concerning the truth of that belief. 
Irrespective of that belief is true or false in itself, this is called the Aqidah in the uh, religious convention. So therefore, uh, tomorrow is Sunday, no, tomorrow is Saturday. I'm missing months and days now. So uh, uh, Sunday, on uh, two days from now, the Christians, you know, will go to their churches and they will uh, and preach uh, Ethan the Maria and his mother Mary, they're Catholic, and they have a belief in the Trinity. This is their aqidah, even though we consider it to be a false belief, because this belief in their heart is something which is firm and it's unwavering, and they hold it to be true. So the term aqidah, in the most general sense, means any firm, unwavering belief that a person holds in his heart, whether that belief is true or false. Okay, that's the the meaning of it. In the most general sense, in the most specific sense, when we say aqidah. We usually refer to the true aqidah, to the Islamic aqidah. And specifically when we say Islamic aqidah, we mean the, the aqidah of Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah, who hold the um, true faith that the Prophet Muhammad came with, as I'll explain shortly. In this context, when we say Islamic aqidah, we, uh, we mean basically a firm, unwavering belief in a certain amount of certain matters or certain uh, issues. The first issue in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala a firm, unwavering belief in Allah. This is the Islamic Aqidah, mind you. Islamic Aqidah. And of course, it's according to Ahl Sunnah al Jama'ah. So it's a belief in Allah. And what is due to Allah? What is His right? From worship, Allah, Tawheed, you know, and also uh, obedience. Two, His angels. His scriptures. Four, his prophets and messengers. Five, the last day. Six, his um, his decree. And for measurement, which we call in Arabic Qadr. And seven, whatever is found in the Quran, of the water Q, and Sunnah from matters of the unseen, previous nations, and A, B, and C, and also things that will pass before the day of judgment. And, and four measurements, predestination, you know, you might, four measurements, other, other. And finally, number eight, which I'll write over here, all absolute issues in the religion, whether dealing with faith or uh, action. Okay, let me explain this. We said that the aqid in the most general sense is any firm, unwavering belief, whether true or false. In a specific sense, when we say Islamic aqidah, or the aqid of Ahl Jama'ah, we mean certain things, and we just sort of listed them over here. Belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and what is due to Allah from Tawheed, which will be the next lectures after we finish these two lectures, uh, Saturday and Sunday lectures, and obedience towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, faith in his angels, a firm unwavering belief, you know, with not any doubt concerning his angels, his scriptures, the book, his prophets and messengers, the last day, which is the day of judgment, the, his decree and four measurement, and I mean by this al qadr al qadr Seven, whatever is found in the Quran and the Sunnah, like the Q and the F there, uh, concerning matters of the unseen, like concerning uh, the descriptions of any matter of thing which is un- unseen, the ghayb, as they, is the term in Arabic, 
the previous nations, like for instance, the Jews of Quran, in sort of their text, right? This is the Sunnah to read on the top of your mouth. Uh, there is a description of previous peoples, previous nations, like little part of names, right? And also in the Sunnah you find the Prophet son talking about the previous nations and so forth. And also things which will come uh, to pass before the Day of Judgment, the different signs and the occurrences that will happen heralding the approach to the Day of Judgment.